Namaste, and welcome to our continuing series, Interviews with Aurovillians. Today we are honored to have Anandi with us. Namaste, Anandi. Namaste. The first question I always ask everyone is, how did you first hear of Sri Aurobindo uh, and Mother? Uh, funny story. Uh, I was in Paris, and um, no happy, because Europe was no more for me, but I couldn't go to Argentina because it was a dictatorship there, no? For uh, a long time. Yes. I went to visit my parents, but I couldn't think of living there, no? I love Paris, but Europe was like nothing else for me, no? And uh, one day, uh, weekends are always filmed, some things everywhere. It was a film in a very, very far away cinema. A documentary film on India, eight hours and a half. Two Saturdays I went. The second Saturday I was almost going because it was, it was not a mal film. No clear, he speaks French, English, all mix it up. And cows and cows and you know. And I said, okay. And I was going. And suddenly, one man said, I'm living in a community, an international community, people from all over the world, I sit down again, no money, <laughs> no pri private property, and I'm a teacher, and the education is not exams and, and ending. I said, what is that? What I'm doing here? Because all my ideas were in that place. Mm -hmm. And I went out from the cinema, how can, I didn't get where. Oh. Monday, I went to the embassy. I mean, I was quite young. Today I was asked direct, and they said, I have something to send to somebody. And the lady said, so many places with a lot of foreigners there. And I felt also lost it. And oh. suddenly, the lady said, Oroville, and I said, ting. He said, yes. And she wrote the paper for me, Oroville, South India, India. You know, 75. I send a letter like that, and one week later, I have an answer for Samsung there, that in Paris it was a center in Rue de Rome. Magic, absolutely. And I start going every, every week there, Till I got, I was working with it, uh, and uh, the kids that they are not well physically, handicapped kids, but physically. Mm -hmm. And uh, I worked one more year to get the money, and uh, I came, I came to Pondi. You know? I didn't know the difference of Pondi and uh, Oroville, okay. and I found myself in '76 working in the Ashram School in Flowers Room thinking that I was in Orovin. I didn't know. Ah. I didn't come from any spiritual thing. And somebody told me, no, you are in the ashram. You are not working in Orovin no. school. And I said, okay. And after I understood, mother was very clever, because at the time, the French were burning the books, and if I had come there, I would run away into that. And I was three years in the ashram. I, I need this spiritual base, and after the, in the 80s I went to Rovin. Were you reading anything of Mother and Sri <laughs> Before coming? No, only, no, uh, the adventure of the consciousness of the time. When somebody asked me, Did, have you read Sri I said, yes, yes, the adventure of the <laughs> Supreme, because uh, they are things from, yeah, the only thing. But I thought of Sri Aurobindo because it's things from him, no? Yes. And I say, no, yes, I did. And the people were looking at me like, okay. <laughs> What's that brand? The only thing that I have read before coming. Yeah. I didn't need more than that. When did you finally go to Oroville? Uh, 1980, I went to Oroville. Oh, so from uh, 70? Yeah. I was very sick. I had to go out from the amoeba, but very bad. Right? Oh. I was 46 cages, three months on bed. No, they put me out. But they, I tell you, everything is arranged in a way that I was, I know that it's not me beside the thing. And somebody took me to Paris. I was in the Institut Pasteur. You were in what? Institut Pasteur in Paris, because of the amoeba. Ah. 
And there, the experience was very, very powerful because the doctor told me, you don't have amoebas because I have the three mantis on bed. I was doing Ayurvedic powder and I worked with the mind to kill the amoeba. And when I went to, to the institute, but say, you know, there they, did, they do blood tests, is yes or no. And I didn't have. And the doctor was quite, say, well, you have to go because you don't have amoebas. And I look at him, I, I went to the toilet and I have to the bed again. And I say, I'm not well. And he was like, doctor say to me, taking my XR. We don't sell colons in Paris. You have to accept yourself. Handicap all your life. Possible we were the same age, 30 something. I was looking at him and I listened to the mother, don't listen to the doctors. Oh, she said me, don't listen to the doctors. And I look at him and say, no, I'm going to be well. And he was like, <laughs> what this lady said, no? It's a long story, if you want to I tell you a little mm -hmm. more because it's fantastic. Certainly. Uh, I was in a house of a French lady, and uh, very impressive, outside, outside um, Paris. She was connected with Yvonne Artaud, and she has also a monkey. Uh -huh. And when I came, the, the husband of her, who was a doctor, organized my stay in, in, in the Institute Pasteur, it was not an easy issue. No? And uh, I, I came back, and I was in the kitchen talking to her, and I thought that the monkey got free. And the house was full of Orovillians, Orotaranti, the mother, coming the following day to Oroville. When I saw the monkey free, I said, keep inside the rooms, because the monkey free, it was a danger, no? And the monkey came to me, direct, I put the hand here, she could kill me. And she left, and the, it was this uh, kitchen, all white, and my blood was clean, and I almost oh. fell down, because I came from, <laughs> from uh, two weeks in the, in the Institute Pasteur. But you know, at this moment you think, if you don't do something right, basta. Because the monkey, the only thing is to come to me, everybody, nobody could help me. And I put a, a white thing and against the, the door, I was like that. I, I listened to the monkey going, and it was really, I said, if you fell down, finish. He's going to eat you. <laughs> and I was like that. And uh, I don't know, by 12 o'clock in the evening, like two, three hours, I was there without moving. The door. And the doctor opened. It was an ambulance coming from the Institute Pasteur. And uh, my arm was like that. When I saw the arms, I, and the doctor said, we go to the Institute Pasteur because the monkey had beaten you, possible you have some problem. When I arrived, the doctor was there, the same doctor. Same one. I tell you, I didn't have more pain. I was so happy. What are, like that, what are you doing here? And the doctor was so furious, put me like that. I brought her, what's the problem? I knew the problem. A monkey has beaten her, and the doctor was like, fell in love and said, she comes from amoebas, and now a, 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 a monkey beat in Paris, I can't believe it. And I was laughing in, inside, although the pain for me was like a revenge, because he put me out like, no. and um, it was very funny. The, other, the doctor didn't understand anything, but I was very happy. And um, when they took me the, the blood, the monkey has passed me as pastoralosis. The cats could do that also. Uh, it's a, it's a, a thing that can give you rheumatism mm. after, no? And what about tetanus? Huh? Tetanus shot. It's, it's called pastelolosis. Only monkeys and, and cats could do that. And uh, they say you have to have 12 uh, vaccines. I say, I'm not going to do that. And uh, I said, okay, I come tomorrow. I never came back. And it was a friend of mine from the time of the ashram, very nice person from um, Ireland. He came to pick up me and brought me to England to a farm 
of a lady friend of him. Mm. Three months I get uh, cured because of that. And I say, why you did this to me? And he say, I mean, look, she went to bed. You don't forget me, so forget why? No, I say, because when we were in, in Pondi, we were sharing a house with Malika, a lot of different people, no? very nice house. I was very sick. And one weekend, everybody was sick. And you were going and coming from the ashram with the food for all of that. I didn't remember that. He said, the least, the less thing that I could do is to come to pick up you than you need now. And after he disappeared, he was in a very inside work. No, they should have been the line, but he was doing some inside work. He did everything organized for me and he disappeared. It was fantastic, no? Charles, Charles. Yeah. No, my life is fantastic. <laughs> I'm very happy that you, no? So have... when, when did you go to Orville permanently? 1980. 1980? Because I was in, in two years in, in London. You know, I was 46 cages, no? I was like that. And uh, I was studying there. I have a um, board to scholarship, no? In English, scholarship. Um, because I was working with the refugees of Chile, and they gave me a, 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 a scholarship for studying university English for teachers. And I was two years there, and mother has organized something else, because uh, to get well, all the natural things are very expensive. And I got half day work in a, a dietetica, how you say, health food shop and I could take everything for my health for free. Look, and I, I got the, there I have learned all the things that after I was doing workshops, polarity therapy, shoeless salt, bath flower. With all of this, I cure myself. Not with the thing that the doctor, allopathics. And there, I, I did a switch off to the health. Although the education is my very thing, when I went back to Argentina, I was doing education, but I was doing all these things, no? what mothers say in, in, in uh, health and death and all that, and all the natural things. That was my way of working in Argentina back. Yeah. When did you go to Argentina? I went in 86. 96? 86. 86? Yeah, because my parents were getting old, and I was only child. And my aunts all were not kids, all, all um, migrants from Spain. And uh, I said, I have to come back. So uh -huh. you came to Orville in 1980? Till 86, I was there. Without Six moving. years in Orville? See, yeah, without moving. I was uh, two years in Matrimandir camp, building the Matrimandir. The best experience in my life. If I had what to did you do for the matrimonial construction? Physical work. Concrete? Yeah. Work. No, everything. everything. I was half day in the school and half day in the matrimonial always. Yeah. Yeah, we were, I mean, <laughs> a worker, no? Yeah. How do you say? Yeah. What did you do in the school? In the school, well, I have done a book with the kids, no? I always work in creative expression, no? Here in the ashram and in Oroville also. And everywhere. And um, uh, I always put together all the arts, you know, movement, music, poetry, like one, only one thing. And uh, we, we were doing expressing in the different creative things. And uh, in Oroville it was a time much more simple that some money came for publication. And they went, oh, we have 500 rupees and we don't know what to do with that. We have to publish something. And I asked the kids, do we want to, to make a book? They said, yes. Yeah. And we organized uh, all the work in the book. I have to do it again because I always, when I have money, I do. But this is the first book that we did with the kids and it's fantastic. I send you a PDF, no? It's fantastic. Yeah, it's fantastic. And uh, it's a pity that, but it's so complicated now to get the money for for things, and I, I cannot come into that. <laughs> yeah, At the time was, ah, yeah, good. <laughs> now it's more complicated. So in 86, you went back to Argentina. To Argentina, yeah. And how long did you stay there? And there was a magic, because I didn't have money. I have 75 maintenance a week. And I did something that the mother said to the teachers here. When you need an answer, 
you go to the bed in the evening with a question very clear, and you get the answer in the morning. Living in the camp, the matrimony was just in front of my bed, my window, and I, looking at the matrimony, I say, look, if I had to go back, how? I have 75 rupees a week, and I went to, to, to sleep, and I forgot the whole thing. And I wake up in the morning, morning just rushing for going to work, and the embassy, embassy, embassy. And I went and When I came back lunchtime, I said, you sit down, you concentrate what this embassy means to you. Mm -hmm. And I remember that, no, South Americans were quite, quite naughty, no? In all the Americans, in relation with the Europeans, were quite naughty, no? Europeans more serious, no? Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember Argentine young boy saying, ah, you do your life. If you have to come back, you go to the embassy and they send you back to your country. And I was so ashamed of that. I said, mother, you are telling me this, that. And it was going on embassy, embassy, and I didn't want to write because I felt that's not good, no? And one day I, I, wrote, I wrote to the embassy it was fantastic because I didn't know, mother knew, that because the democracy has come back, they gave money for the people outside to come back uh, to the country. Uh, it's not how I could come. You know the prices to our ticket, no? And um, it was fantastic, no? Because um, look, all the thing was miracle. Uh, because the embassies, I don't know yours, but mine, my experience, they were not nice people and not nice people to, to help you, no? And uh, I sent a letter explaining that I had to come back because my parents and my uncle were getting old and I was a volunteer in Robin, ta, 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 ta. And one day I forgot him. And one day somebody told me, because before you had the kitchen in, in opposite the matrimony, and the letters were in a the box there, no? Somebody told me, you have a letter like that, go. Yeah. And I went to take it from the embassy. I almost fell down when I read. <laughs> I was thinking of my mother that used to say the same thing that the mother's mother saying to her, you are never going to be anyone because you are flying there, no? And I was listening to her <laughs> because it was written. Um, if you want to come back, also full families, they pay, not the car, but everything, also the furniture, everything to come back. And I was not going to take my furniture, but I mean, uh, three, no, 3,000 rupees, 3,000 dollars for, for house, 3,000 dollars for start the business, and the full ticket, I was, I tell you something, I was listening to my mother, you are never going to be anyone, because you do what you want. And uh, I, I, at the end, it was like, this is for refugees, for, uh, what is the other, there is two things for political things, refugees and uh, two, two, two different things. I was not uh, any of that. And the, th the third was genius. And I sent a letter to the secretary saying, look, I, I sent to you what you say, but I'm not coming into any of the three categories, no? You what? Any, I'm not a refugee, I'm not an asylum, and I'm not a genius. I mean, I, I'm not, my, myself, I'm not in any of the three categories. And they were asking for, for um, you know, when you ask for a job, no? Present paper where you have been working, at the time. Look, I don't have anything. Miracle. Miracle. See, I have my teacher certificate because a friend of mine from England, when I didn't come back, he put in a, in a ship two years and arrived one month before. My certificate of teacher, the only thing that I got. I said, Look, I sent this to you and Anne Marie, we didn't have any anything. Thing in Oroville official. Mm -hmm. And Marie read the paper. She is an Argentine people doing voluntary work here for this time to this time. And Marie. I sent to them but this little paper with anything and my certificate of teacher. And I say, look, I don't think that you could do anything for me because I'm not in, in the categories of your giving all this money. And I send it again, I forgot. 
And one week later, Zambote, you have a letter in the kitchen. Okay, I want to take the letter. And there I remember something that mother used to say to the teachers. If you are happy when you get the thing, it's the right thing. And if you are not happy, it was not the right thing. It was your, you wanted. And I went opposite the matrimandir again and I opened the letter because I didn't know what the letter said. And uh, the first page was from the minister in Argentina. And the lady said, say to Mrs. Fernandez that if she has no house and work and everything, better don't come. Well, this already was an answer for me, like saying, I'm not going. I stay here all my life. All the letter was like official letter, horrible to me like that. And she said at the end, we don't have more. She was very close because the people that have used this rant, almost of them, they came back to the country we were living before because they were not happy in the country with the things. And she was absolutely frustrated. And she said, we don't have more these, these things or were used. But there is a um, ONG in the Belgium that with the same characteristic I give a ticket and hundred dollars and hundred dollars arriving. I never, Narad, I was not thinking, me, I wouldn't write the letter. Because for me, this letter of the lady was already saying, no, my place is here. I turned the letter and I have the ticket because the secretary has them to, to Belgium. He was my angel. I wouldn't do it. Because when I read that, I said, no, sorry to my parents, my place is here. He has sent the letter to Belgium mm -hmm. and I got already the ticket. Can you understand that? Yeah. Who, who have arranged that? Me? No. no. It was not me. That sometimes when the people are afraid of the money, and I'm not afraid anymore, I say they don't believe. She's, if you are doing what you have to do, mother arrange your life and, in the money. <laughs> I used to do the tour in the matrimonial once a week. And it was a lady from France coming to visit me. And she always said, if you come back to your country one day, you have to spend in Paris the full day in my house. And I was looking at her, I said, girl, if I go <laughs> to my country one day, I go to the Russian or the, the Arab countries, the cheap ticket, no? You know what was my ticket? Air France, hmm. Delhi to Paris. Oh. Arriving, I couldn't do that. Mother could do. <laughs> <laughs> Arriving at 5.30 in the morning to Paris. She was with the car there. Oh. I passed the full day in her house with the kids and the family. 5.30 was my Argentine flight to Buenos Aires. How I cannot believe in her magic? You must how be... I cannot believe in her magic? Uh -huh. We have lost this magic. It's for this we have economical problems. We have lost that in all of it. But this you cannot make another one believe. You have to pass through that yes. because it's not an easy issue. No? Exactly. Imagine how much was this ticket. It was a normal ticket. $10,000? I don't know. And I was 75 rupees a week at that time. Yeah? But I think that mother was right because I studied the Abbey Center in Buenos Aires. You? I studied the Abbey Center in Buenos Aires. My work, the Avi Center, Avi Argentina. AVI. Yeah, AVI, sorry. AVI. I started one month later and arrived because if not, I could die. Uh, it was horrible my first year there. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because their mother, she had born because it was fear. I mean, the people were living in, in a place. Even the new government was not. Yeah, here. but what I was taking for the. for In my house, I was okay. But when I went out, it was a physical fear that I couldn't understand. And it took me time to understand that in the road the people were killing. And I was receiving, coming from so many years in this uh, space, I was receiving everything there. And it was very difficult at first, till the Mudachi came, and I started doing Mudachi, and I started feeling the, the 
protection. No? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, it was difficult. But I had to stay. I have to stay because till my two aunts, my mother and my father passed away, I was there. I, I came back ten years ago.